Oh, okay. So I, you know, I actually have, I've had questions scrolling up here this entire time. Um, l- let me see. I, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure where I should start out. Uh, maybe I could start with Jeremiah if that's, is that okay with everybody? Oh, Jeremiah is going to go on for a while. We're actually working on this. <laughs> okay. So I, I just realized I can't ask Richard everything that I wanted to ask because he's, um, he is under NDA, so there, there are probably a lot of questions I have on this list that after hearing his sort of closure and his talk, I may not actually be able to ask, but I would sure like to. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let me see. Hector, I think you had a couple questions too, right? Actually, uh, I just wanted to know who the project manager at DARPA he's, he's, he's dealing with. Oh, right now, um, it was Dr. Michael Fitty is the one I Yep, uh, that's what I was going to say. It has to be Fitty because he's the only one who's sticking his neck out that far. <laughs> yeah, well, well, what's happening is he's, he's moved on. He had to leave the project, so I'm getting a new project manager. I guess all of the projects he was running, you're getting new managers. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I thought he, he was only doing it temporarily, like one term. Yeah, that, that's what it was. Yeah, he told me he had to leave, and he didn't tell me why. <laughs> okay, uh, well, does anyone – let me see. Who, who else has questions? Uh let me see. Um, oh, Robert O'Keefe. Robert, um, let me see. Where are you at? And I should apologize. I've, I've got so many people on here, it's hard to manage them. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Robert O'Keefe was asking if you could incorporate Teflon into this. I think you different materials, right? Yeah, we. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, at Tachyon, we've, we've been working with... Uh, graphene capacitors for generating like capacitors the size of uh, oil drums uh, that we've been building but super lightweight composites to generate uh, extremely large charges to fire into a smart skin on our craft that we're working on Uh, and part of the what we're dealing with is is building up like phenomenal electrostatic charges on the skin of the craft. Um, we're using carbon, uh, like not carbon fibers, sorry, uh, <coughs> graphene graphene uh, composites in the skin, but we're also uh, charging the craft up with uh, static. And one of the things that we've covered the carbon fiber composites, not sorry, the graphene composites with. Uh, is with Teflon. So I just wondered whether you guys uh, have tried using Teflon uh, in with what you're doing on that on that skin. Uh, well, so uh, we we do use we have used Teflon, but right now the everything's shielded up with um, usually you know a layer of. I don't know we've used different types of things like uh, acrylic and stuff, but yeah, we have used Teflon. Uh, most of the panels we make now are on PET. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand you can't say a lot, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah, but it sounds like you're making the same kind of, kind of composites that we are. Um, I have a question for you. Besides um, graphene, Thanks. you also mentioned nichrome. Is there any other uh, material that you could maybe mention that also has an incredibly high electron drift velocity. Well, no, right now, uh, graphene seems to be the easiest one for you guys to get a hold of, right? Because you can actually buy that. Yeah, we can buy sheets of pyrolytic la- uh, graphene. And I know the termination was one of the questions that I asked you about. You, you talked about the, uh, the termination methods. I guess I'll have to take a look at that. What's the uh, actual search term to figure out how to electrically terminate to those graphene sheets? What would I look for? Oh, I, I don't know if you can, you can look, uh, I don't know if there's anything out there. So, you know, we do it because you have to take off the acrylic uh, coating and then, yeah, you have to apply them and you have to apply them in a way that um, doesn't hurt the graphene, right? So people are applying this um, copper pads to them. You can use the same technique they do, right? But you mentioned the copper pads aren't really the ideal way to Yeah, it. yeah. So instead of using the copper pad, you would use the, you know, whatever material you want, like which could be these... Uh, directional composites. If you use copper pads, would you still get an effect or would it completely negate the effect? Uh, it doesn't completely because you're still at the center of the sheet. You're still going to see a large change, but yeah, it reduces it by a lot. So is the, um, I guess the, the good question to be then would be uh, at the uh, termination points, is that to 
sort of uh, equalize the electric field over the entire surface of the graphene um, instead yeah. of just having it in the center. And that's yeah. like, the advantage of using the whole sheet then basically instead of just using part of it. Yeah, yeah, you want to use the whole sheet, you know. And so, you know, and that's why I say. So trying to apl apply different things to the graphene, there's a number of, uh, you know, papers on how to attach to graphene sheets, even though there's not a lot. So I don't know if, I would just search to see how other people yeah. have done it. I, I'm only asking because I had actually looked it up and tried to try to find some relevant information that we might be able to do, but I was just really hard pressed to find any uh, any information that describes it in detail. But yeah, uh, yeah, you might. So, and I can't tell you anything about it. <laughs> that's perfectly all right. Um, are you able to talk about your old experiment, your disc experiment, or is that still um, under NDA? No, no, that's good. Um, no, that's all right. So the biggest problem with you know rotating elements is you know. You, you have, to get a lot of charge in a rotating element, you gotta uh, you know have a high voltage on there, and then the other thing is the element rotates; um, it's generating vibration and stuff, so it's really hard to get a good measurement of force off it. Yeah, now you were mentioning only um, only grams in your uh, patent as far as forces that you observed over the total weight of the device, but you could probably make the device lighter and, and perhaps you know suspend it on some some system that suppress most of the vibrations to maybe get a little bit better measurement but i'm in the process of replicating uh your work right now we actually have just ordered stuff in our uh laboratory in new jersey falcon space and we're going to attempt to replicate your disc experiment now one of the questions that i had that we've been having trouble with is the dot product layer in terms of mixing the epoxy to saturation so that it can electrically conduct um we've taken a look at a lot of different epoxies and and um, we took a look into silver microbeads along with other, other conductors. And uh, we're not quite sure how to apply that layer. So far, previous attempts have yielded a really uneven layer and all of the distribution from ultrasonics could pretty much distribute the microbeads evenly. We haven't gotten to good nano coating. I was just curious if you could explain maybe one way we possibly could create the doc product disc. Oh, so I don't know, that's been a while ago. I mean, it was really hard for us to be able to get um, you know, the entire matrix to be uniform. So, um, you know, so the type of boxes you want to use are the ones that, uh, you know, are really viscous, right? So that, that's the first thing to start out with. And then, um, you know, when you ultra, you know, you have to ball mill them and then you ultrasonic them. And, um, you know, that's another reason why we stopped going to there because we did have in inconsistent results. But one thing we did find if you can rotate the dot product um, disc instead of the other one, you get better results. So I don't oh, know how much I can tell you. That's very interesting. Uh, I did notice that you you had used high speed, extremely low leakage diodes as well on that system, which obviously you carry that onto your new project. So you probably can't talk about those high speed, low leakage diodes. Yeah, you know, so you, you know, so it technically is possible to, to take to have to build something that will work as good as a tube, but from the stuff you can uh, get a hold of, I would just use a tube. Yeah, I mean, tube's great, but you you actually were able to eliminate the tube, is that correct? With uh, your selection of components? Oh, not really. They never worked as good. Yeah. Oh. So, and I can't really talk about um, how yeah, they would do it now. I mean, tubes are available on eBay. They're cheap, and we can run them off lithium ions just like you did. So that mm -hmm. little NASA prototype that you sent in, that looked pretty good, and that seems like a fairly easy test model to assemble where we can at least prove the principles and observe them ourselves. Well, th this is Tim. If I if I could jump in really quick, um, and this, hopefully I don't sound too ignorant, but um, so all of the examples that you've showed, just for simplicity's sake, right, are kind of two, two uh, I don't know what you call it, a bilayer, right, where you have the two materials. Could you stack layer after layer on top of each other and still generate like a directional force, or would the layers kind of cancel each other out? No, no, you should be able to, to stack them. Yeah. Oh. It's it's about the total quantity of electrons flowing at a different drift velocity, right? So it's actually that yep. quantitative measurement. So the thicker the material is, then effectively the more current you can pump through it, and the greater the electric field on the surface. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Except it's got to be really smooth. So with CVD graphene, there's a there's a limit to how thick you can get it because if you get it too thick, then you you start getting um, bad results because you know then the electrons are not flowing in a single sheet; they're you know moving between sheets. Uh, so like pyrolytic graphene tiles would be totally out of the question then. Yeah, I would use those. You know, you want to use CVD graphene. That makes sense. Well, that that certainly makes it a little complicated in terms of maximum current throughput that you can build on that system. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we really are only talking, um, you know, maybe a couple hundred mils at most. 
do you think that uh, you guys will ever develop a technology where you could generate pounds of force uh, by upscaling or finding some other property of material that you could utilize? No, yeah, no, that's what I was saying. The scalar electric potential, if you can let it build up, we're, you know, we're looking at sky's the limit, you know, replace rockets. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, the, big, the biggest problem with scalar electric potential is you can't build up a DC one because it, it, it basically starts interacting with the environment and then it takes more and more power to put into it. So you got to use an AC one. How do you build up a scalar electric potential like that, though? If it's totally isolated from ground and you have an alternating current, wouldn't you end up at zero over average or? Well, I, yeah, I'll give you the point where I can't talk, but no, you, uh, you, you accelerate yeah. a charge perpendicular to the direction of the current. You can decouple a scalar potential at which point um, you can build an AC one. Oh, it's the acceleration. Then that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. I, I'm sorry to ask so many probing questions. Yeah. I'm not trying to get you to, to violate anything, but it was awesome to hear from you today. And what you presented was fundamental. And if we can all comprehend that and apply it to our various systems, I think it offers a lot of explanations to several things that you, we have observed over the years. So thank you so much again. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reason I presented it this way. Is hopefully some of you guys can start working on these and, you know, we can do the, I guess what we do, the, the Wright Brothers scenario where, you know, science has said everything's impossible and then a bunch of people in the garage, you know, just sending things into space. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try this month. We're going to try to build your disk device this month, and hopefully we'll get some kind of results from it. If okay, we well, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> you, you always ask me. Um, um, it, it's been a while since I've worked on those. Um, but yeah, you know, you can always email me and I'll respond. Yeah, thanks. Um, I figure nice, clear pictures will be helpful. Uh, Richard, Richard, uh, could I ask a quick question? It's John Brandenburg. Yep. Yeah, yeah the, the scalar uh, vector potential you're looking at um, is there any connection with that mathematically with the scalar that pops out in Kaluza Klein theory? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, th I think we're coming, to, um, we're working the same problem for different directions. Okay, yeah, okay, because when you do Kaluza Klein, which is in the center of this gem theory I'm working on, out falls this uh, scalar potential. I'm going to cut them to the point where I can't get the thing under. Okay, what about your toes? Oh, what was that? Toast it. I think putting butter on the toast will help. So somebody suggested. Okay, yeah, and you, and you know, I've been, I, I've been talking to Lance, you know, on- Oh, the, good, the good. Lance is an expert on this. Yeah, you know, he doesn't see where I'm coming from, but when I look at his um, stuff, um, we're really trying to describe the same thing coming from different directions yes you know except lance's theory doesn't give you any way how to implement it i'm giving you the way to implement it well uh, we're all we're all kind of looking at the elephant and uh, you know or rather feeling part of it and uh you know some of us have its ear and some of us have its tail and you know eventually we'll get a, a an overall image of it i believe yeah i agree w wonderful well Richard, thank you again. And d does anyone yes, else Richard. have any questions? Uh, yeah, Tim, Paul, March. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Uh, are you, let's see, to uh, Richard, are you, I yeah. assume you're are familiar with Bearden's work? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it seems like you guys have a lot of parallels between his approach to this business on scalar fields and where you're going with it. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and the big key is, you know, you know, what are scalar fields and, you know, the scalar fields are the, you know, the potentials that we gauged out in electromagnetics. Yeah. We, yeah. I grouse about what happened to Maxwell's 20 equations every time I see the quote four Maxwell equations. Anyway, I digress. What, what, uh, what's profound to me is that, uh, you know, because the scalar potential is uh, pinned to coordinates in space, you know, you're essentially creating a, a capacitor in space, space time, uh, you know, without needing plates. I mean, you know, that's not exactly what's happening, but, you know, you're controlling the voltage at different uh, coordinate positions and uh, you can create voltage drops and things like that. Um, you know, the voltage is, is not fixed, it's, it's changing in time. But uh, I think of it that way when I, when I, when I visualize things uh, and try to you know, 
try to think of, of ways to uh, exploit, you know, exploit the phenomenon that's being uh, presented. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the, um, the LaForge field propulsion thruster? It talks about creating a difference in electric charge from an isolated system. It's uh, very reminiscent of what Ben Dirk has been discussing here. You have to have an isolated system. And what his device does is you set up an electric potential between these asymmetrically oriented plates and you add a charge to just one of those two plates while the other plate is isolated. And you end up with a, uh, what, he, what he describes as an expulsion event or an expansion event where you generate a force. It's kind of strange, but if you guys want to take a look at, and I guess I can drop it in the chat here, um, the LaForge field, uh, field effect thruster, I can drop the uh, French patent in here. I think it's quite related in terms of isolated systems and uh, difference in charge positions within these materials. No, yeah, Debbie got a, you know, and that's one of the things like asymmetrical es es capacitors and stuff. You know, I think one of the reasons why they've had problems with them is because of the way they're powering them. Yeah, they got, they got to isolate those things to start seeing these effects. Uh, so does anyone else, let me see, Robert O'Keefe had asked if you're using something called ALD. I'm not sure what that means. Um, no, I don't know what that is either. What? Uh, uh, do you know, uh, I'm just curious because like what, what we've been doing with uh, the craft that we're working on the, the skin, uh, We've been using atomic layer deposition uh, with our graphene and uh, by adding different, well, we've, we've tried different materials onto the graphene using ALD in the labs. I was just curious whether you guys have looked at that with, with what you're doing. Uh, is, 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 that, yeah, is that something you've looked at? Yeah, well, so are you able to increase the drift velocity, um, the current flowing through the graphene by what you're adding to it? Yeah, yeah, we've, we, see, our, our, our main goal was for the skin of the craft was to create a, a phenomenal charge of static on the, the skin of the craft, but also we've got other things going on, which I'd have a one on one conversation with you because we're also signed up to. Uh, yeah, NDAs and stuff, uh, and talking with Space Force at the minute. But uh, I, yeah, I was just curious if you looked at that, whether it was a, a yes or a no. Well, no, so I'm not really looking at different types of graphenes. We have a supplier of graphene sheets um, that we use, but I'm always looking for, um, you know, another type of graphene that, you know, has the, you know, the drift velocity, the shot velocity going through the graphene um, that is higher because, you know, the faster we get the charge to move through the graphene, the better our effects. Yeah, now, uh, if we can, if I drop my email on chat, uh, we can share with you what we've done. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll just... Yeah, um, if you drop that, I will. I will forward that to him. So, uh, okay. Um, does Does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Well, I I think Richard. I think that was everything. I think that's everyone. And uh, let me just say thank you again. And and uh, let's everyone have a have some yeah, applause. Th thanks for having me on. Thank you again, sir. All right. All right. Talk to you later.